Okay, so uh, the Carnot cycle is, well, we're, we're going to answer the question, what is the ideal heat engine? All right, so Carnot figured out that using reversible processes is the best way to go. That's ideal. That's our theoretical goal. Uh, so the I, how could we have an ideal heat engine that, that it maximizes... The, the net work that we get out, it maybe minimizes the rejected Q, um, the QL, right? Uh, it minimizes that uh, rejected. Uh, so for a, a, a heat engine on a PV diagram, right? A heat engine takes heat and spits out work, uh, but it also spits out some leftover heat. Uh, if we want to go from state one to state two and back to state one again, what's the ideal? Should we go straight here and, sh and straight here? Should we go here to here, here to here? What is the best way? Well, if we can find a way to get from one to two using all reversible processes, then that's our uh, goal. So, if we're looking at a heat engine that is a piston cylinder uh, device uh, that gets some Q he heat, it expands this, it pushes this shaft, this shaft maybe rotates uh, a shaft in order to get the, um, to get the, uh, the, 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 uh, work out of our system and remind me to I still haven't posted that illustration really cool animation of um, uh, the heat engine and piston cylinder uh, devices all right so piston cylinder device sorry uh, expansion is our work out all right expansion is what when when this hot uh, fluid expands this pushes this against us then we can get some work out of that I think that makes sense but we need to get it back to its starting state, get it back to state one. And so if the compression, when we push it back, that's the work in, but hopefully the work out is greater than the work in so that we can get some net work, uh, W net. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. This is how we can get from state one to let's call it state three, uh, using reversible processes. Well, the first step is to go from one to state two, and this is going to be an isothermal expansion. All right, this is an isothermal expansion. All right. And then we go from state two to state three via an adiabatic expansion and then there we are we are at state three all right now um, we need to get back to state one if we go just back the same way we went then there will be no net work all right so we got to go a different route using um, reversible processes we're going to go from three to four, and this is going to be an isothermal uh, compression. And then we're going to go from four back to one, four, four back to one. You probably guessed this adiabatic compression. And that is the Carnot cycle. All right, that is the way we can make a cycle with expansion and compression uh, where we're getting work out uh, using reversible processes. Uh, we put QH in as we go from one to two. Uh, we expel QL out as we're going from three to four. And the area right here is the net work out, right? The area right here is the net work out. 
Okay, this is work out because uh, expansion is work out, compression is work in. So technically, this right here is the work out. Let me do it in a different color. I'm out, out of colors. Uh, this from three to four to one, this area under here is the work in. And so this green area is the net work uh, that we can get out of our heat engine. This is for a heat engine. Okay. For heat pumps and refrigerators, for heat pumps and refrigerators, it's kind of the same thought process, uh, but we go down here first, here, here, here. So, so it's backwards as far as one, two, three, four. And it, we are putting in QL through here. We're putting in out QH right here. And this, because we went backwards, this, I'll, I'll still do it in green. This would be a negative work, or this would be a work that we have to put in. That's a work we have to uh, put in. Okay, the Carnot cycle uses Carnot principles to expand and compress our fluid to get work out, or uh, we're putting work in, and there's heat transfers uh, right here. So let's talk about Carnot principles. And, and this, and I'll show you one uh, diagram that I'm going to send you. All right, Carnot principles. The efficiency of an irreversible heat engine is always less than the efficiency of a reversible heat engine operating between the same two reservoirs. And still, a reversible heat engine is not 100% efficient. It's not 100% efficiency. It could be 80%. could be 70%. Um, a reversible is just the best that we can do. Irreversible, always going to be less than the efficiency of a reversible. The efficiency of all reversibles, of all ideal heat engines, operated between the same two reservoirs, regardless of whether the working fluid is water, refrigerant. The um, efficiencies of all reversible ideal heat engines are the same. Are the same. Okay, and real quickly, I don't even have any derivations here. You can look in our book. Um, I don't even know. The... It can be shown that the ratio of QH over QL of a reversible process is equal to the ratio of temperature hot divided by temperature cold. All right. This is... Uh, sorry, th these uh, have to be absolute temperatures, okay? Can't use Celsius, can't use Fahrenheit. These have to be absolute temperatures. What does that mean? That means if we have a reversible process, remember all those equations that had QH and QL in it, or, or, or all those equations that had this ratio of QH to QL? Now we can plug in TH to TL in those uh, for reversible processes. Okay, so we'll we'll do uh we'll we'll hit on that a little bit more. Let me show you. one uh, uh, page I, I put together. I think I pieced this together from the book. Maybe this is in the book, uh, but I think yeah I cut copped and pasted this together. This is a Carnot cycle right here. This Carnot cycle has a lot of explanation. From one to two is an, a reversible isothermal expansion. Again, th this this can't is ne never going to really happen if you have an energy source at some temperature, and the flu the temperature inside there is the same temperature. There's not going to be much heat transfer, but if it's small enough, if we can get it small enough, uh, then we can say okay, that's the best, that's the ideal, that's the reversible isothermal expansion, and then somehow the reservoir that was in contact is completely replaced and completely insulated so that the system becomes adiabatic, right? So the system, there's no heat transfer and it's reversible. Um, well, no heat transfer plus reversibility also means is adiabatic. Um, all right, so then we have an adiabatic expansion. 
Then we remove the insulation, we put the sink that's still at, that's at the new lower temperature and reject that QL out of there and then insulate it again. Uh, so again, you know, this is not possible, but it's the goal, it's the ideal. This is what the Carnot cycle looks like on our PV diagram.